today's speaker. Uh, Chen Yu is now a PhD student at uh, National Taiwan University, supervised by Professor Guan Xi Shen. He is also an intern at uh, HSQC. His main research interest is quantum, uh, uh, quantum classical hybrid algorithms such as QAOA, and today he will bring us his uh, latest work on solving large-scale easy model. Let's welcome Chen Yu. Okay, so so can everyone hear me? Yeah, we, we can hear you. Okay, so so thanks for the invitation for this talk. And today I'm going to share about our latest work on the hybrid gateways and annealing quantum computing for large easing problems. And if you are interested in the full article, you can search for this archive number. And the outline today will be like this. So first I will introduce what is the problem we want to solve and, and what is the current review of research with three branches. And, and after that, we will, I will propose a method called large system sampling approximation or LSSA. And after propose the results, the, the method, I will show some result based on the proposed method by different backend in the simulators or in the real device. And after the result, I will have some discussion on the result. And, and then this will follow by a, a summary and a future work. So uh, in in a, a, a main research trend in a quantum computing is to solve a combinatorial optimization problem. So for example, a traveling salesman problem, if we have a lot of cities want to travel and and we want to find the shortest path to to travel into all of all of the cities. So this is we'll have different or a lot of com combinations. So which combinations will let us have the best cost function is called a combinatorial optimization. And the second is the portfolio optimization problem. So for example, if we have like 10 stocks and we want to choose five of them to buy and which kind of combinations will give us the, the lowest risk and the highest return. This is uh, another combinatorial optimization because we have a lot of combinations to, to choose. And this kind of combinatorial optimization problems can be transformed into a quadratic unconstrained binary optimization form or in short, Kubo. And we can see that in the, because it is Kubo, so we will have a quadratic term xx xi xj and a linear term xi and for this form formulation our variable x is a binary variable with a value zero or one repre representing a choice to choose or not to choose so this this kind of cubo formulation can be further transformed into an easy model so this model is a very famous model in the physics domain. And its form is like this, with the spin variables minus one or plus one, represent the up spin or down spin. And we can see that this, this has a very similar form to the cubo model. And this is model can be solved by a lot, a lot of method and and, and um, for example, we can exact diagonalize that if the system size is not so large, or we can solve it by some uh, wave function assumption like mature product state or neural network quantum state, and solve it, solve it by some vari variational method. And we can also solve it by a simulated annealing, which is a 
simulated version of the uh, annealing process, obviously. And this is uh, all the classical method. And we can also solve this is model by the quantum method, such as the uh, variational quantum eigensolver, which is also assume the wave function form or a quantum state and use some variational method or some optimizer to, to find the best parameter that can approximate our ground state. And we can also use the quantum annealing to solve this easy model. And because in recent year, we have some uh, cloud quantum computing platform. So it become real or possible to use this platform to test our quantum algorithm. So, so we can have uh, some briefly review of research for this this well developed method. So, so first the quantum annealing is a process to to find the solution by tuning the system Hamiltonian to our problem Hamiltonian. So if if we have a full Hamiltonian like this, we construct by two parts. The first part with the a coefficient is a is a Pauli operators uh, term, which which we will assume that the ground state of this part is very is easy to be prepared. And the second part with this b coefficient is uh, our problem Hamiltonian. That uh, is the problem we want to solve. So the, the quantum annealing process is a process to to firstly start from the Hamiltonian O O in A terms, and when the annealing process starts, we will just turn down the the A coefficient and turn up the B coefficients, and because we will assume that in the in the beginning of the quantum annealing process, the state is in the ground state of the A Hamiltonian in the part A. So we will also expect it that when the annealing process ends, the state will in the ground state in the Hamiltonian, but here is in the, Ham, in the, Hamilton, the ground state of the Hamiltonian in the part B, which is the problem Hamiltonian. So Different from the, the classical uh, annealing or simulated annealing, the quantum annealing can utilize in some internal effect, which we expect to, to have some ability to find the global minima or the minima with lower energies. And we will we can have we will have some uh, hardware. For example, the D wave provide such hardware to do in this process, which maximum 5,700 qubits. But due to some issue of connectivity, the, the, actual, the actual usable qubit is significantly less than this number. And next, I will shortly introduce uh, VQE, but I assume many of you may already know this. So a VQE is, is uh, using a quantum computer to construct a, a quantum state or a wave function assumption with some tunable parameter theta. So here, so we can first see that we will start from a, a quantum state here. And after that, we will have a lot of rotational gate and some entangler which uh, the rotational gate have some rotational parameter theta. And after this uh, operations, we will have a, a quantum state, which can each de which is depends on the parameter theta. And after that, we can calculate our expectation value of our problem Hamiltonian by this uh, state with problem size p. And after that, we can we can try to find what is the best data for our problem using a classical optimizer to update this data until the data is converged to some data optimal. We will say that also this 
problem is solved by this VQE. And we can see that different from the how the quantum annealing. This this VQE requires some quantum gates to do the trick. So 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 today we we have some that hardware provider uh, provide some gate based quantum computer. For example, the IBM quantum have maximum 127 qubit quantum computer, and maybe we'll have a lot more in these days. And also we have regated, have maximum 80 qubit of the, the quantum computer. And this architecture is the superconducting circuit. And we can also have different architecture of the, uh, the hardware, for example, the ion trap architecture. So these two companies provide the ion trap quantum computer with with uh, about 10 qubit of the of the scale. And and the superconducting circuit or the ion trap have different pros and cons. So the the superconducting circuit will have the faster gate time in a scale of nanosecond, but it will have the fixed connectivity because the, the connection between the qubit is, is fixed on this, this board. And you will also have the short coherence time in a scale of microsecond. But for the ion trap, although it, it will have some it will have the slower gate time in a scale of microsecond compared to the nanosecond for the superconducting circuit. It will have the complete connectivity and a long coherence time. So depends on what kind of problem you want to solve, you may choose different architecture of the gate-based quantum computer. So followed by the so the QAOA is also a branch of the VQE, and which have using the concept of the, the adiabatic uh, quantum evolution. So we will start from this quantum state and followed by a lot of hard mark gate, which will make this state a, a ground state of a mixer Hamiltonian. And, and next we will operate a a time evolution approximation of the time evolution operator on this ground state of the mixture Hamiltonian. And we will expect that when the level P is, is large enough or deep enough, our, our quantum state is very close to our ground state of a problem Hamiltonian. And also same as the VQE, we will find this gamma and beta parameters by some classical optimizer. And also until the gamma and beta converge to some gamma optimal and beta optimal, we will say, so this problem is solved by VQLA here. And note that this is also problem size of NP. And we will notice that so this method, including the quantum annealing, the VQE and QAOA, they can only solve the size MP problems on MP qubit device. And this may encounter some problem if we have a lot of variable in our combinatorial optimization problem. So for example, if we have like hundreds of variables here, and represent by this graph, each age represents a variable, and each each node represents a variable, and each age represents the coupling between different variables. And compared to this size of problem, maybe we will we can also we will only have this size of the gate-based quantum computer. So we can see this IBM purse. It only has seven qubit or IBM Q Lima, it also only have the five qubit. So if we follow by the, the VQE or QAOA uh, 
mentioned before, we can see that it, it should, it may need a lot of work to make this size of the hardware to solve this scale of the problem. So problem is too many variables. So now it, it comes to our proposed method called large system sampling approximation or in short ELSA. The concept is very simple. So we have a full problem like this also uh, represent as a, a problem graph. And we can we can choose some subsystems. So for example, like this red pink uh, region and we only solve the part of uh, this subsystem by the quantum chip, either by the gate-based quantum computer and the VQE or QAOA, or a quantum annular. And after solving this subsystem problem, we can do this uh, process again and again, and until we collect a lot of the solution for this ground subsystem ground state. And now the problem become how to uh, reconstruct the solution for the full problem by this solution of the subsystem. So here we will we will let each subsystem have a coefficient C and and use another gate phase chip and using the VQE to find the, the best coefficient for each subsystem that can reconstruct the ground state approximation with the lowest cost function value. So in more detail, so first, if we have a problem Hamiltonian like this, and in this form of this edge, and we can random group in them into a lot of subsystem Hamiltonian. So for the full problem Hamiltonian, the variable is up to MP. The index is up to MP, but for the subsystem Hamiltonian, the index is up to M. And of course, the M is less than MP to become a subsystem. So now we will have total NS subsystem because K is from one two to an S. And after solving the, the ground state of this subsystem Hamiltonian, we can construct a, a vector SWC of the weighted subsystem ground state from the solution of this subsystem Hamiltonian. So like I mentioned before, each ground state will have a coefficient or undetermined coefficient CK. And for, for this form, we, we will have a different value for each side of the full problem MP. So for example, for some side I, this CK, GSK for the side I maybe have some positive value. And if the, the value of the sum side is larger or equal than zero, we will set the the solution for the this side of the full ground state is the is plus one, and if the sign of this C K G S K is less than zero, we will say the side of the full solution for this the solution for this side of the full solution will become minus one, and of course we can see that the side of this SWC will become the ground state of the full Hamiltonian when M close to MP. So the second part is how to determine this CK coefficient. So we can encode the NS coefficient by the NGB qubit gate-based quantum system, where NGB is the ceiling function of this log to NS. So because for NGB qubit quantum system, we will have up to two to the NGB amplitude or basis. And each basis can represent a, a 
a coefficient of uh, the ground state subsystem. So, so for example, the measurement result for some basis can represent a coefficient for a, a ground state for the subsystem. So using this property, we can have, we can use in this NGB qubit to encode NS coefficient. And the cost function for the for problem will be like this. So this H will be squeezed by the two sine SWC vector or wave function approximation, which I mentioned before. So how to find this C? We can construct a base QE, which have a lot of rotational parameter like this. So tuning this rotational gate or tuning this rotational angle of the, this gate will have different outcomes of the a measurement result for different uh, bases. And so different bases can represent a, a coefficient of a subsystem ground state. So in this sense, we can we can optimize this VQE to find the best coefficient of different ground state of the subsystem so that we can approximate a, a, a ground state for the full power run Hamiltonian by this. So in this sense, the NGB qubit gate-based quantum computer can solve a cubo problem or easy problems up to NGB times two to the NGB variables because we can have subsystem size of the size of the gate-based quantum computer and we can up to we can have up to two to the NGB uh, subsystems. And we may notice that this subsystem can not only be solved by the gate-based quantum computer, we can also solve this subsystem by the quantum annular. So in the case of the quantum annular, the cubo or the easing problem can be solved up to an an times two to the NGB variables. And we can show some number of the current hardware. So for IBM, it, it has like hundreds of qubit and Rigetti have 80 qubit. But the upper limit of the usable qubit size is around 20 or 30 considering noise, connectivity, or number of swap gates, which may cause a lot, of, a lot of noise. And it is interesting that this number is also close to a number that we can simulate a quantum system in our personal computer. So it is an interesting time because the, the quantum hardware and the classical hardware, the they, they are kind of very similar in the power of computing, like in a useful case. And another another time another type of the subsystem solver is the quantum annular. And again, the D wave, although it have like five thousands of qubit, but for the fully connected ASIM model problem, it can solve up to around 145 and this number seems to in, seems to be increased a little bit recently so we can see some result of this proposed method so first i will show the result of the exact diagonalization and simulator so i so here i consider the fully connected random easing problem. So it means that each variable is coupled to every variable uh, except itself. And the, the jij and the h is in the range of the minus one and one, and is randomly picked in this range. So we can see in the figure A, figure A, I I fix the number of the subsystem and and the number of the 
size of subsystem and increase the size of the problem from 8 to 20. And first, if our, our subsystem is in half of the full problem, so for example, if our MP is 8, our subsystem is in the size of 4. So we can see that in this case, the approximation ratio is around 70 to 0 0.70, 0 0.7 to 0.8. And of course, if we if we turn down the, the size of the subsystem to the fraction of 0.25, so, so in this case, if we have an MP of 12, our our size of our size of NG is three. So in in this case, because we only have a smaller subsystem, and we will neglect we will neglect a lot of uh, coupling because this is a fully connected random is model. So we will have a poor performance here. And here the approximate ratio is defined by the fraction between the ELSA ground state and the ground state energy and the exact ground state energy. And the subsystem is solved by exact diagonalization and the amplitude optimization part is solved by this IBNQ CASM simulator. And in the figure B, I, I use the D-Wave double solver to try to test our method in the range of the problem size from 20 to 200. And we can see uh, an obvious downtrend when we increase the system size while fixing the, the fraction of the subsystem and the problem to 0.5 or 0.25. And this is obviously because if we have a larger problem size and we will neglect a more coupling between the different variables because again this is a fully connected random easy model and here the subsystem is solved by the d-wave table solver and the amplitude optimization is again solved by the ibnq CASM simulator and here the approximate ratio is defined by the the fraction between the ELSA ground state energy and the Tapu sober ground state energy, which is provided by this sober. And now we, we may want to see what is the effect of uh, tuning up our subsystem size or tuning up our number of the subsystems. So, so in the A and C, we fix the number of subsystem to four, and for each point, we we solve hundred of random fully connected ASIM problems for each subsystem size. So we can see that if we fix the size of the problem and tune up the size of the subsystem, we will achieve a better result and which is expected because if we have a, a larger subsystem, it will become easier to approximate the, the full problem. And the second is, is if we turn up the number of the subsystem from like two to 32 in this MP equals 10 case, we may see the a performance will, will increase at first, and it will just converge to some value. Here is the value of uh, 0.87. So, so the the number of the subsystem can be increased, but the performance will be converged to some value. And similar behavior can be seen in the case of MP equals 20. And here, the because our size is just 10 and 20 for the full problem, so the approximate ratio is is a fraction between the exact ground state energy and the 
the ground state energy are method provided. And now, because in in the real case, the the hardware size of our the hardware size we have may may be fixed. So it is also important to see if we fix our hardware size or the subsystem size and tune up the problem size to see the performance. And it is expected that if we increase the problem size too large, our performance will become very poor, very poor because we neglect too many of the coupling in this random easing model in the full connective connectivity case. And here the red cross is the result obtained from the real hardware called IBM Auckland with five qubit. And we can see that uh, although for for this case I show the result up to 128 size of the problem by only only solved by a five qubit on the computer, the, the performance is quite poor that we 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 may not can say we, we solve this problem. But this is just a case of the fully connected random easing problem. And this is in general in general a very hard problem because it is fully connected and its coupling is a random number between the minus one and one. So we may expect the performance will be different in different kind of the problem, easy problem or the cubo problem. So that's the time to introduce a portfolio optimization problem. So consider a problem Hamiltonian like this. So it, it, it has three parts of this Hamiltonian. First is the return part, which is a negative mu transpose omega. And here omega is the binary decision variables, like the variables x in the second or third page of this presentation. And the mu is the expected return of the asset or the stocks, which we can calculate it from the history data, historical data. And the second, so we can see that if we want to maximize our return, the minimization task for this Hamiltonian will need a minus or negative term here. And the second term is the term of the risk. So the risk here is just a covariance between the asset with some parameter gamma, which, which is tunable to, to have different like uh, tolerance of the risk. And the third is the, the constraint term, which, which has a penalty coefficient followed by the, the total investment K and the sum of our omega. So, so for example, our omega is a vector and of of each each element is zero or one. So this term means that the sum of this zero and one should be k. So this is our total investment constraint. And based on this Hamiltonian, we can have a an indication called sharp ratio, and it is just a concept of the volatility and the, the fraction of the return and the volatility, or you can just consider it as a risk. So it's the return divided by risk. So this this indication or this ratio is better when it's larger. And for the following experiments, we use this parameter. So the gamma is one, the penalty coefficient is n, which is the number of our asset. And the total investment is just half of our asset. So this is a, a typical data for the portfolio optimization. We will have 
like roughly 32 stocks and we want to pick 16 of them to investment. So uh, a, a, an example of a solution were like this. So we will have a, a vector of length 64 with only 32 elements to be non-zero. So we can see that in in this case, the, the classical approach and the ELSA will have different solution for this problem. And to measure which is better, we can just plot a, a, plot a, a figure of the volatility and the return. So as I mentioned before, the, the sharp ratio is just the, the fraction between this volatility and return. And we can see that the classical solver is still better than our ELSA solver in, in a sense of ratio. But they are all better than the random sampled portfolio. And in this age, we will call it efficient frontier. So for, for some more results on the simulator and the, the real hardware of this portfolio optimization, we can we can start from the simulator with simulated stock data. Here we have a, a subsystem size equals to the size of the gateway's quantum computer of the or the size of the annular. And the NS is the ceiling function and 2MP divided by NG. And in this case, the subsystem is so again solved by the D-wave type solver because it is sometimes larger than like 20 or 30, which is hard to solve by exact standardization. And the amplitude optimization is again done by this CASM simulator with the definition of the approximate ratio as before. So we can see this a purple square is uh, NGB equals five by the simulator. And here we, we can find surprisingly in the case of uh, portfolio optimization, our, our ELSA like performs quite good. And this this may from this is this may result from the the fact that the the coupling between the variables in the portfolio optimization is weaker than that of the fully connected random easy model. So that if we neglect some uh, coupling, it may not affect the performance that much. So we can see this um, purple triangle is the case in the NGP equals seven which may decrease a little bit when we have larger MP. So here we can see that the MP is, is uh, like several hundred to several thousand. So for example, maximum we solve the portfolio optimization to two to the 12, which is like 4,000. And Besides the results from simulator, we also have some results from the real hardware by this IBNQ Guadalupe, IBN Cairo, or IBN Auckland, and D-Wave Advantage. So for this red cross and the dark blue cross, the, the NGB is equal to 16 for this two uh, quantum computer. And for the this dark blue, the the result is from the real stock stock data instead of the simulated stock data. And we can see a hybrid structure of the annular and the the gate-based quantum quantum computer here by 
solving the subsystem in the size of 100 by the quantum annular and use uh, a gate based quantum computer of the size 7 to do the amplitude optimization to decide the coefficient of each subgroup. And note that the good perform performance it just means the result is similar to the classical solver and is not guaranteed to be similar to the actual solution of the problem. And because in the size of several thousand of the pupil problem or ESIM problem, it is also nearly impossible to, to find the actual solution of such size of problem because the solution space is like due to several thousand. And this is some data of the two uh, real real stock data and the, so the result of our ELSA solver and the classical solver. So the A and B is in the same group of the size 32. So this means that we, we want to pick 16 stocks from 32 stocks to invest. And, and the CD is we want to pick like 32 stocks from the six, 64 stocks. And in both case, we can see the classical sober is still performs better than our ELSA sober, but they are all better than the random uh, sampled portfolio. So we can have some discussions of the result we have. So for the first uh, scaling cap capability, so because it's not means that we can solve the problem quite large, very well, but we can have some region of the problem size, we can solve it, have some usable solution. So for random is in problem, we can see that if we if our problem size is in the in the range of the this 10 to the zero range, ELSA could be useful. So for example, if we have a if we have a NGB equals five here and up to NP or problem size equals 16, our approximate ratio is still like more than the 0 0.8, 0 0.8, which may be acceptable in some case. So in this, in in the part of the front of this graph or figure, the ELSA could be useful for the rent and aging problem. And for for the portfolio optimization problem, we may have a, a better scalability because some reason of the coupling of different stocks may be weak. So in this case, we, we may have like dozens of larger problem size we can solve. So for example, in this 4,000 uh, prob problem size, we can only, we can solve this by only 100 qubit of the on the annular and seven qubit gate-based quantum computer. And the computational property can be briefly introduced like this. So the time of the list ELSA is equals the time to solve the subsystem times the number of the subsystems plus the time to execute the amplitude optimization, BQE. So that we know that the time to solve the BQE because it's polynomial time because the if we have a, a Hamptonian have maximum turns, it's a polynomial growth. And the NS is also uh, is proportional to MP. So that the result in this TLSSA is also a polynomial time. So what is the what kind of uh, advantage may this ELSA algorithm have? 
So one of them is the possibility of the parallelism. Because we may found that there is no causality between the subsystems in ELSA because we we render pick one and we render pick another one. There's no causality. So that it is possible to use multiple quantum computers to solve the subsystems in parallel. So like in this, it is for flow chart. In this part, we may solve it by different quantum computer in the same time. And also in reality, it may be easier to have multiple quantum computers with smaller qubit size than one computer with a very large qubit number, like for example, thousand. It may be very expensive that like almost no one can use that. And also in in the content I mentioned before, we also we we only divide the the problem into the subsystem once. And it it is not limit to to divide the subsystem into the sub subsystems. So here we call the the subsystem divide one time to be the level one approximation. So that in that in that case that NP is equals to NGB to to the NGB. But if we further divide the subsystem into a sub subsystem, the the maximum problem size we can solve will become this. And for example, the number for NG was five, this MP will become 5,000 times 5,120. And the consequence of this level two approximation is that we need to solve this amount of subsystem before dealing with the full Hamiltonian. So the one of the possible approach or the, the way is to solve them in parallel with several quantum computers, maybe in the future. So here comes some summary and future work. So this uh, Elsa tackling the problem with size much larger than our current hardware with one, the, it, com, com, it can combine the, the advantage of the gateways and annealing quantum computing approach. Using this quantum annealing can solve larger combinatorial problem or subsystem, and the gate-based quantum computer can utilizing the amplitude to be some, some coefficient we want. And just like a lot of different heuristic approach, the solution quality is, of course, problem dependent. And the approximation ratio is very close to one for portfolio optimization. And since the subsystem picking process is has not causality between different subsystems, so they can be solved in parallel. And it also can have multi-level of approximations just have some trade-off of performance, perhaps. So the future work is to find, first is to find a problem or the problem group suitable for this ELSA. Because since we have a, a example of the portfolio optimization problem that performs quite well, we assume that it may have some different kind of problem. It behave just like the portfolio optimization problem. And perhaps this kind of problem can form a group so that we may just we may say that this kind of problem can be solved by ELSA very well. And the second is the different grouping method. So in in the in the uh, content here, we only group the subsystem randomly, but it, it can have different approach to do this. So for example, we can use the community detection algorithm to, to detect the community in this problem graph before we, we form the subgroup. And we can just use this community we, we found to be our subgroup. And this may achieve a better performance. And another 
kind of approaches the reinforcement learning. Because this sub subgroup picking process is a decision or or a strategy to pick in subgroup, we can we may learn this strategy by some reinforcement learning agent. By that it see a lot of different kind of uh, training data or strategy. And if we if we conquer these two things, we may just can move to the, the target of this this uh, solver to solve the challenging problem that is too large in size in these days. So, for example, the uh, the prime factorization problem or the to factorize RSA numbers, this will be quite hard or extremely hard. And also the drug discovery because the molecule may have a lot of uh, variables to be solved and you may have, can be divided by sub problems. And we can have a glimpse of the ongoing work. So as I mentioned before, the community detection algorithm. So for now, we have some preliminary results that show the strong ev evidence of the community detection can can indeed perform uh, better than the random grouping method. So like this green dot compared to the gray dot. So this uh, horizontal axis is a fraction between the problem and the subsystem. So we can see maybe in this case, for the sub subsystem size equals 10, our performance is increased from like 0.5 to 0.7 just by changing our strategy to picking the subsystem. And another thing is just a, a, a workflow for the reinforcement learning. So the so reinforcement learning in this case is to learning the grouping strategy with lower objective value or the cost function value for the full problem Hamiltonian. So the ob observation or, or the state can be problem graph, the historical reward, or some historical action. And the action here is just to output the group indices from the policy network by this robot agent. And the reward is obviously can be chose to be the cost function value of the full Hamiltonian. So this agent perhaps can be found a, a good strategy in, 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 the, in the representation of the network itself to find a, a good strategy to, to have a lower expansion value for the full Hamiltonian. So let us back to the summary page. And that is, this is today's talk. So thanks to everyone. Thank you. Uh, is there any uh, question from the audience? Uh, I may have some questions. Uh, yes. So when when you uh try to evaluate the performance, you are uh determined from the ratio of the mm -hmm. group size to the overall size. I think you may try to make other metric like uh the and the group happily number in uh the missing missing bound. Uh, in a uh, ratio of, uh, by divided by the total total bounds some something like that or or the bound strings they, they may be another way to do the uh, make uh, evaluation okay you you mean if this is a full connect fully connected random easy model this ratio will be very small because we neglect a lot of coupling yes yes Okay, so oh, it is a good point for that. Thanks. And yeah, thank you. And so, yeah. uh, do, do you think about uh, adapting some kind of a uh, renormalization re group mes grouping method, like uh, changing 
uh, the size, then changing the bound equivalent length, uh, equivalent strength. Then, yeah, then, I, I, I mm -hmm. can also uh, study some some paper in this domain. Yeah. Okay. I see. Yeah, but you may need some quite some work to to implement this kind of RG method to the real quantum computer. I see. Uh, so uh, can you compare the RG method to the community detection method? What was the? I think a community detection may be easier, right? Yeah. You, your your community uh, grouping is based on the bound strength or based on which uh, criteria? Uh, it's based on the the bound strength. Yes. Okay. I so in the in the same community, they, they will all have the stronger bound compared to the the variables not in this com community. Yeah. And in your case, uh, because your bound strength is random, but in mm -hmm. certain range, mm -hmm. so so it's hard to, uh, so it's hard to use the number of bound. You it's better to use the bound strength. Uh, integral yeah. right okay yeah and so so to implement this community detection i i need to set a, a lot of different criteria of the community detection to output a lot of different community yeah i see i see uh so so do you think about uh implement and some more structured graph then that there your result may be improved for some structured graph because yeah. you are now discussing the random graph. Right? Yeah. Uh, in, in fact, we I have some result. It's just not not in this presentation. Yeah. Okay. I see. Good. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm done. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, is there any further questions? Uh, sorry, a small question. Uh, can you explain uh, what's your random frontier again? Uh, I just missed that part. I, I don't know what was your random frontier. Random frontier or you? In the, you mean, yeah, this one, uh, efficient frontier. OK, okay. so so in in the in this uh, like finance region, they will say, so um, where's my pointer? So for this efficient frontier, it is uh, an, an age or boundary of this, this random portfolio. And the efficient frontier is the frontier that for unit volatility, it have the, the highest return. So for each volatility, you can draw a point of the highest return. And if for different volatility, this this return can form a line. And this is this line is just called the efficient frontier. Oh, so all these random for for, for portfolio uh, should obey some equation, then you it, it can give you a bound. And um, this bound is a uh, efficient frontier, a boundary, right? Yeah, the yeah, it is a boundary that the volatility, like the a unique volatility, can have the best return. I see. Yeah. Uh, so what's the equation they have to follow? Uh, it is. Oh, Hamiltonian. It is quite uh, complicated if we want to describe this efficient frontier. Because oh. if we know the efficient frontier, we just solve the problem. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you you just use some Hamiltonian to solve this uh or for portfolio problem, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. Thank you. Okay. Is there any further questions? Okay, if there's no further question, uh, 
Okay, Chen Chen, I have some comment on the selecting commute, uh, the, the sub problem you. Okay. Yeah. I, I think you, you, I think the way to detect the sub problem is actually, um, you, you could check some web property testing algorithm. And that, that means uh, you, 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 you may apply some uh, testing algorithm in the subgraph and check if the subgraph have, have some prop, property you desired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the, the time complexity for such a uh, testing algorithm is always, is sometimes small. Yeah, sub, okay. uh, sub linear time complexity. And that means you could check uh, the web property mm -hmm. uh, in a very fast way. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So, so like community detection is one of this, this graph or, or one, one of this way. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, you, you could, uh, for example, there is a property, uh, I remember it's expander. Expander property means, uh, uh, if, if, how can I say, you, you could test how the connection between the subgraph and the, the other, uh, the, the, uh, and the, the other, uh, vertex. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think that we could that may be help in in your uh, criteria for dividing the sub problem. Yeah, it, it seems yeah. will be. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Maybe I I will like send you some some mail or message to <laughs> to retrieve some 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 sentence you you just mentioned. Yeah. Oh, oh, of course. Okay. Thank you. Thank um, you. Is there any further questions? Okay. Okay. If there is no further question, I'll thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.